What up? This is the 3 a.m. podcast. My name is Sean. My name is DJ. My name is Charlie. And we're just a couple friends telling spooky tales. Welcome back to another episode. Charlie, how you doing? Are you, how are you holding up? Good. Not little, a lot of sleep. Little daddy. Yeah. So barely sleeping, getting a couple hours a night. Been That's all you day. need. <laughs> Not me. I'm very used to eight hours. <laughs> Same, this is quite same. the change. <laughs> um, uh, do you guys want to jump into random shit? Sure. I know we have a a docket of things, a to, long list to cover. We do. Yeah. Let's just. Run oh, we it. were we were supposed to record yesterday. Yeah. We didn't. That was the plan. And then yeah, like, what happened, dude? Like what? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, An hour before. About. <laughs> yeah. Four o'clock. I texted the boys and I was like, "Hey, it ain't it." <laughs> I can't do this. Uh, I don't want to like keep bringing down the listeners every week or you guys, but uh, baby girl got sick, which is a big fear of ours because if she gets too sick, she'll end up back in the NICU. Hmm. So we were dealing with that all night, all day, and it just wasn't getting better. Oh, I text you guys. I said, yo, I can't do it. I'm already stressed. That's fine. It's been a thing. And then I go to sit back down. <laughs> On my couch, which is where I've been sleeping with baby at night, where I was spending all day. And I see something that's like five inches behind my head. And DJ, I put it up on Notion. Yep, I'm already bringing it up. <laughs> and you do the first one. Just put it up on the screen. Let let the viewers look at it for a minute before you uh, go to two or three. I'm walking back to sit down and I see something that shouldn't be there. This is where you sleep. Yeah. So my wife and I are like taking shifts. Whoever's with baby like sleeps out in the living room. We made like a whole setup just so the other one can get some actual sleep. Bro. Hard pass. Hard oh, pass God. on this pick here. No. You guys are about ready to see it. Sorry, everything's being so shitty right now. Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay. Most technical. Difference. I know it's. I life is so hard right now. <laughs> we just cannot get. I kind of want to cry. <laughs> okay, look how shitty this framing is, though. <laughs> <laughs> like this is the best I could do. <laughs> All right, do you guys see anything? Let's watch chat. Does anyone see anything that might be concerning in this photo? Uh, no, nah, dude. All right. Zoom in to photo two. Bruh. Oh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Zoom in one more. Is Charlotte up in here? What's up? Oh, that ain't Charlotte, dude. That's her shiesty ass cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the extra zoom here. Oh, that is a f-ing huge <laughs> black widow. <laughs> So if you look a little to the left, there's a white pillow. That's where I've been resting my head. It's <laughs> right like next six to it. inches to the left of the back of my head. Oh, and I just screamed, grabbed a mason jar, put it in there, took it in the backyard, and murdered it with a shovel. Holy shit. Bro, if a you, lot of anger out on it. <laughs> if you do develop any like superpowers in the near like couple of days, let I'll us know. I'll be able to speak with the dead. Oh, because I will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you sure it's dead though? You got it, bro. I made sure I scraped the goo off the bottom of the shovel. Oh, wow! To make sure, because I was like, "This motherfucker is not coming back in my house." Just like the Marvel movies, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah, she gone. But like, I was already super stressed. Now all feeling of safety in my home is just gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm checking every blanket, every pillow. That's why you gotta get a so, you gotta get like Vivant or something, some security too. Against some spiders, dude. <laughs> Kick these spiders out. <laughs> anyway, so that was yesterday. Today, all of our stuff's malfunctioning. Uh, let's talk about cheating. What Here's about cheating? Thoughts, feelings, dude. Are you talking about the try guys? Okay, there is so much cheating going on in the world right now. Oh, so much. Just in general, fishing. Fishing. Huge upset. What are you talking about? Oh my gosh, like. Uh, I'm going to butcher the details, but here's the gist of it. There's a huge fishing 
community and like uh, of competition in Michigan. Mm. Sounds one about guy right. Took like first place and won hundreds of thousands of dollars for fishing. How are yes. they cheating? Yeah, how? It's like, sir, this oh. is a bluefin tuna in the Great Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, uh, this shit don't exist. Yeah, this is a great uh, white shark <laughs> in Lake Erie. Uh, if you watch, there's a video, and he's up on stage holding up his fish, and they give him his weight. Everyone in the crowd is like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Oh, he's weighing it, it this- throwing weights yeah. in the fish? What? Yeah. So it turns into this big hullabaloo. Everyone rushes the stage. At a fishing competition. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Well, whips out a knife, cuts the fish open, and pulls out huge weights. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> loses it. Like the most passionate I've ever seen. I don't know if I've ever been that passionate about anything, <laughs> let alone cheating at a fishing competition. Damn. Dude, so if you have time, you should listen, or you should watch it. But, uh, so the fishing world is an upset. Bro, the chess world is, is an upset. upset. And I was going to get to that. The chess world is an upset. I was kind of talking to DJ about this at work. I was like filling him in all this <laughs> drama. But Sean, do you want to tell us what's going on? I mean, basically, the number one chess champion in the world loses to not some nobody, but basically a nobody. The number one as in Magnus Carlsen himself? Magnus himself. Put some respect on his name, Sean. And I, so I was, we were getting there. We were getting there. <laughs> and this nobody comes in and beats him. And this is all alleged, of course. I don't think that they've been able to prove this. But allegedly, he was using anal wait, beads. Wait, wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to tell him what moves to make next. Wait, wasn't that the... Oh, wait. Okay, everything's coming together now. Wasn't that the poker scandal, too? I mean, maybe it was a poker Did scandal, you too. Poker no, but, like, the way that chess works, essentially, is you're thinking one, two, three, four, five, six moves ahead. And so, at that level, essentially, you have to be able to explain why you're making these moves. Because you're trying to get him to do this or him to do this. Was he able to explain? No. He, was, he would say stuff like... King me. <laughs> he would say stuff like, he's like just because I Yahtzee. felt like he's it. like yeah Yahtzee <laughs> Uno so everyone is like it sounds like he was basically just doing the moves that a computer would and that's kind of okay. where the anal beats I come in I have some in. context I can break it down okay go for it but speaking right now seriously is super hard <laughs> <laughs> I might have to take my headphones off for a second okay so he comes in out of nowhere, this American dude. Huge upset. Beats the top seat. It's happened before, but there's some things that where people were like, something's going on here. This is suspicious. There's a website that all chess players play on, and it tracks every move. You can look at it. It keeps a log. Chess.com? Probably. Yeah, I watch Queen's <laughs> yeah. Gambit. Ooh, girl. So it gives you a score on how perfect you move based off like an AI that would make perfect moves no matter what. So like <laughs> Bobby Fisher had like a What nerd invented that that technology, dude? <laughs> dude? It's like it's one thing to like have an account on chess.com. The other one is to like develop the the chess.com like AI itself. Yeah. Score them. <laughs> so a bit yeah, it gives you a score. Don't talk about nerd shit. <laughs> Cut that. Uh, it gives you a score. Bobby Fisher was like a 72. Who's the Bobby Fisher one, does not sound like a real name. That sounds like an <laughs> alias. Ah, he's like some chess player who was a kid huh. back in the day. I mean, yeah. Uh, what's the main guy's name? Magnus. DJ? Magnus Carlson. Oh, he had like he'd been number one like for like 80. 10 years, huh? Something like that. Yeah, something wild. Uh, he was dominant for sure. Let's say he had like an 80 low 90s or something like that, right? And your score varies depending on game. The American dude had a hundred percent score for like forty games or something. That's like impossible. Impossible. Exactly. That's like, is there anyone on like two K? That's like two K and Madden stats. Like LeBron James <laughs> is like a ninety-eight. You know, Michael Jordan's like a ninety-nine. Like That's nobody's a hundred. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like E Honda and Street Fighter Two with the, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. pass it. Yeah. Not fair. Um. So anyway. Carlson drops out of the tournament. 
tweet something cryptic and it was like if i say what's going on like i'll get in trouble so everyone online is trying to theorize what's going on and the most prevalent theory is american boy is cheating how is he cheating and so the theory lands on what sean said the most <laughs> likely theory is that homeboy has a butt plug inside of him that vibrates giving him information Dude, this if is you're like going, the realist, most prominent theory. Here's the thing. If you're going to that level of cheating, I think it should be allowed. <laughs> I don't think... You have a if, point. If you're doing that, I don't think you should... Like, if you win, you shouldn't get anything because you cheated. But it poses a new challenge for everyone else <laughs> to true. try to, you know, overcome it. And if you like, ain't you cheating, really you ain't this? trying. Yeah. Like, if you beat somebody in a street fight and they're fighting dirty and you win, it's like... That's like even more credit to you. That's like way True. more street cred, you know? Because like you, you threw f- sand in their face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you threw sand on their, their face and they still knocked you out. It's like, yeah, you deserve to be knocked out, you know? Yeah. But the issue is this guy's winning. Yeah. So I'm saying, what like, let, let, let him keep cheating, but don't give him like prize money or anything if he wins, you know? But they haven't been able to prove he's cheating yet. Just bend over, boy. Yeah. They're going to have to. King me and cough. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, dude. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like intaking into a jail to enter a chess tournament now. Did you hear about the, the poker? The poker one? Mm-mm. I didn't. Uh, it was something similar. I think it was debunked. Don't know how. <laughs> but uh, uh, this girl had this uh, crazy, uh, had this hand that wasn't going to win, but she won by bluffing. Anyway, the dude who had like a 98% chance of winning or something like that lost to her 2% and he was uh, just destroyed and he accused her of using anal beads as well. What? Yeah. Damn. Is that why our podcast isn't doing well? <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> The missing factor yeah. we need? <laughs> not using That's a sponsor. anal beads yet. We need, we need the Adam and Eve sponsor, you know, <laughs> for all our listeners. Oh, what oh, is shit. that, boy? You're already on it, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, the D20. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that in. Poop it out. Yeah. What do we roll? Adam Levine cheating? Yeah, dude. Everyone's cheating. Everyone's cheating. Uh, the Try Guys. Somebody messaged, okay. messaged me Wait. in a group chat today, and I don't really know them. They were in BuzzFeed is all I know. Have we watched any of their I videos? have never heard of these people. They have their own Netflix Ever show, so life. they have some I've level heard of, of uh, them, but you I know? don't know, like, yeah. Here, here's the thing: I'm on the internet ten hours a day, different sites. Never heard of these, guys. <laughs> and then now they are my entire feed. feed. <laughs> <laughs> People just the like the drama. drama on that note, though, what's everybody's uh, average screen time? Oh, let me see. Oh, Pull it out. Since I'm using my phone, I don't. I can't. No. Mine is four hours, 18 minutes. Wait, how do you check that? You just pull up your, if I'm you're in, on the I'm home, in settings. Oh, I did it differently. Is it just screen time? Oh, screen time. Hell yeah. But yeah, you can do that too. Yo, I got like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, Ren's got 10 more minutes on me. <laughs> I got six, six and a half hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> I legit might be up in the nines. Yeah. Damn. I think I've reached twelve. Just, I think I've reached twelve once. <laughs> what are you? That's called four hours that's and like, eighteen you minutes. Fell asleep with it open. Yeah, it's either that or just mad depression. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that number probably directly correlates. I now knew high score <laughs> with your depression. You're a mega piece of shit. <laughs> Relationship. We should gamify <laughs> depression. <laughs> gamify yeah, depression? <laughs> yes. Like, we should make an app. It's like, you didn't do anything today. Here's like 70 points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, like, we'll go through levels of depression. And then, what do you, what, what do you use? The, how do you yeah, redeem what do points? You, what does yeah, it go yeah. to? Pills. It's like, something helpful or something like even more not helpful? Like, if you like reach 200 points, it's like an online person. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> What are those things called? I need therapist. Therapist? Oh, I was like going the help? opposite way with assisted. What are those uh, things? Unaliving. <laughs> oh, the assisted unaliving. <laughs> Damn. Uh, oh, jeez. Doctor Kavorkian ass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or maybe it's like uh, 
Or is it like 10% a percent discount to like gym membership? You get 500 points no, of depression, like... you get a month uh, membership to the gym. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or cinnamon rolls. <laughs> or cinnamon oh, rolls. Oh, uh, actually, yeah. some cinnamon a rolls. A dash pass. <laughs> A dash pass away. <laughs> I'd be depressed every day yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Any other Dude, cases of cheating, in chat, though? Throw in your screen time. I want to see what degenerates you are. Bro, I still have everybody beat. Let's go. I still think, honestly, I'm probably eight or nine. Just Sean, I'm what? Up all night. Sean, what are you on? on my phone. 418. You know what's the crazy thing? Huh. Sean's the only one without a job. <laughs> And he's still winning, dude. <laughs> We've somehow managed to uh, have a full time job and full time uh, degeneracy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do full time anything, full-time dog. Job. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is why Sean was fired. Yeah. <laughs> you you need to get on your phone more. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, dude. everyone's cheating. Don't cheat out there. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, dog. Here's the thing, honestly. Could you guys do that? Enter what? in a competition, knowingly cheat, take the money, smile, do interviews about how good you are, and like live like that. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Oh. <laughs> and what? And what? What? What context? Like what competition or any game, competition, sport? dude? Hmm. My favorite. Let's my favorite anything, teams: the New England Patriots, and we cheated. cheated all the time, dude. Is it again? Said my favorite football team is the Patriots, and we cheated all the time, dog. I think the conversation changes uh, depending on the context. Like if True. you're like juicing up in an Olympic sport, gold medals, it's like everyone's gonna hate you. That's only the next. But if it's like level, though. if if you're cheating in like Magic the Gathering, there's a lot of okay, people It's there, a competition <laughs> that has a lot of stakes monetarily, socially. It's not just like. I don't know, pogs with your fourth grade classmate. <laughs> it's not like a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. Oh, dude, that's yeah. real though. No. Pokemons. Okay, so Sean could easily cheat DJ. Here's the thing. Let me just also say I'm at a very zero Fs place <laughs> in my life right now. So if you had asked me like two weeks ago, I might have sat, had a different answer. Now Before I literally you don't give by your work. Any f- <laughs> so I cheat. I don't care, dude. Okay. DJ. I feel like I, I would just for the fun of it, but I wouldn't like claim like I'm the best or anything. No, you got to own it. You got to just gonna like. But like at the end of it, they would interview and be like, you are literally the best at this. How did you do it? I, I, see I, dead I, che- I cheated. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's the biggest. All right. All right. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I don't know. Guys, I will do it for us then and make all the money. And I am also an exceptional liar, I would I would say. And I feel like I could really own that cheating and no one would ever know. Okay, what if the cheating requires key string a, a butt plug? Okay, that's actually where I draw the line. <laughs> so you're not willing to go the distance, dude? I, I, I'm willing to lie, not stick a butt plug on my ass, though. Man, weak. <laughs> yeah. We know people who did it for free. I wonder if they, I, <laughs> I wonder if they check the... Uh, the uh, the guy in Michigan for for butt plugs. The fishing guy. Yeah, he's like go <laughs> fish. Like, he's like go draft. fish. <laughs> 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 Spreads his cheeks. Go fish. Um, that's funny. Damn. I think that's it. What's going on with Kanye, bro? Bro, you are caught. Up, you are up to date on Kanye more than I am. Do you want to give us a rundown? No. <laughs> that's all good. What do you know? Somebody, somebody was asking through? me about it in chat. Yeah, you are. Okay. Uh, Kanye recently, dude. Where do you start, bro? I yeah. don't know, dude. His whole life is a uh, is a uh, is is just a. Uh, I don't even know. Whirlwind. I could go as fast as I can. We can go all the way to. Speaking of whirlwinds, we could go all the way to Hurricane Katrina <laughs> if we wanted to with Kanye. <laughs> George Bush doesn't care about but, black but, people. I watched that live as like a what 14, 15 year old. I remember seeing that and on TV with him and Mike Myers. <laughs> Mike Myers just in shambles. Yeah, just like uh, uh. <laughs> he's like, get out of me swamp. Hilarious. <laughs> when there's actual swamps uh, going on in New Orleans at the time. 
<laughs> wow, they really got the Shrek guy to represent all the people in the swamp in, in New Orleans. It's only right. <laughs> the biggest swamp. Yeah. <laughs> Full circle. So like, we need you to help them get out of the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> they actually think Kanye played donkey. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, nah, that's like another. you're the black guy who did the the donkey <laughs> voice, right? <laughs> that's why he was pissed that day. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about Kanye. Dude, right okay, now. <laughs> Kanye West has a deal with Gap. He cuts that very publicly. He starts calling out. Same with Adidas. CEOs, like live on on. Social media screenshotting, yeah, iMessage conversations, posting them online regularly. Then he throws Yeezy season six or something like that. His own, his own uh, fashion fashion show. Yep. While he's at it, he's wearing a shirt that say "White Lives" or all wait, white white, white, lives, white matter. lives matter. And you could say this is the genius of Kanye. You could say this is him needing the acceptance of white people. <laughs> Which is what Charlemagne the God said. Nevertheless, after the show, that's all everyone's talking about. And that's kind of Kanye West's superpower is he can garner attention no matter what. Whatever he does, love him or hate him, everyone's talking about. I, he's doing a lot of interviews and he's just being really not media trained with his answer. Which is making people double down on their love or hate for him. Yeah, no. Yeah. And then I, on Instagram, he's calling Erwin out. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. It's insane. Like, old friends that he's had are, like, denouncing their friendship with him. Kid Cudi is one of his oldest friends. They just have the biggest beef <laughs> right now. Um, anyway, I don't, uh, I don't know what to think. I'm not as big of a Kanye fan as I am. I'm not in the camp where I think he's infallible. No, not at all. That fool is uh, that fool is whack, dude. <laughs> In what way, dude? So many ways. Uh, well, somebody. Okay, this isn't one of the ways, but somebody <laughs> said uh, uh, I call it. Uh, somebody in chat said uh, I call it personality disorder, and he's like come out talking about like his uh, bipolar. You know, it's not an excuse, but uh, it does provide some. <laughs> Some insight, you know, explanation there. <laughs> a little bit of context that might so, be important. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. It's sad. It's a. Uh, at the same time, he's a. He's a huge troll, massive troll. Did you see when he was in court with? I think Suj Knight, and he has his hands over his head. I almost want to play the clip because it's so damn funny to me. I was gonna say, what's your favorite yay moment? It's when and he's we'll like, on. he's talking about, he's on a podcast recalling this experience and he's in court with Suj Knight and he has his hands over his head. Are you talking and about Shug Knight? That's what I Suj, was going to say. Suj Knight? How do you say it? Shug? Shug, Shug, Shug. Knight. Shug Knight. Dumbass name. Shug <laughs> Knight. Uh, Shug Knight is like. Shug is so much better. Take, <laughs> take, your, take your hands off your face. Take your hands off your face. And he's just like shaking his head. <laughs> just shaking his head. <laughs> And he's like, I need you to take your hands off your damn face. And he says, I will not be treated with disrespect. I will take my hands off my face if you ask me nicely. He says, Mr. Kanye, will you please take your hands off your face? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that moment is so funny. Him retelling that story and yeah. just seeing this grown-ass man in court. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Being so juvenile is so funny to me. <laughs> and him retelling oh. that story, he's laughing his ass off at that. <laughs> big, big troll. That is so funny. <laughs> that Bro, and- my favorite moment is when it's like 5 a.m. He's in his L.A. home and oh. then a paparazzi's outside. <laughs> Good morning, and Kanye. Paparazzi's like, Good morning, Kanye. He's like, shut the f*** up. <laughs> Just like 4 a.m. So outside funny, his right? residence. Because <laughs> uh, at, that, at that point, they had already been bugging him like throughout the whole night, making noise outside. So anyway, that and the Lady Gaga one. The Lady Gaga quote is probably my favorite one. Where it's like, if you can communicate the product, you can make money off the product. Look at Lady Gaga. She's the creative director of Polaroid. He's like, I love Lady Gaga and I love so many of her songs. But what the f- 
does she know about cameras? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, that's the thing. And that's the thing with Kanye. It's like, let's say 80% of it is, is wildness. Things I don't necessarily jive with. But he has nuggets, bro. <laughs> like, he has just diamonds in the like, rough, mostly oh, yeah. rough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> diamonds are forever in the rough, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he he has enough diamonds that it's like I can't fully say goodbye to brother. I can't yeah. write him off completely. The, I yeah. think he's at the level almost where he's wrong in a in a lot of contexts, but. uh Somehow still uncan- uncancelable, uncancelable. Like he, like he hasn't been. People have tried to cancel him. People have tried to cancel Eminem, but like they've attained a level of stardom. <laughs> and I'm not saying that's correct or right. I will say it. It's just uh, I think it's, it's good. He has. I'm just saying what it is. Like the reality of it. Like they're still popping yeah. off. You know. Yeah. I yeah. think sexual assault and like murder are the only things that would like make them get canceled actually canceled you know so which is uh maybe i don't know there's a lot of fools out there who have both of those who are still going yeah you're actually right for me personally yes maybe where i draw the line murder the public murder who, what about who who would murder uh oj <laughs> yeah <laughs> homies on and the whole right kardashians now. come from oj you know bro uh the kardashian Mom two, what's her name? Mom two, Chris, Chris nope. Jenner, the other one, Court. Uh, no, uh, Caitlyn. Yeah, yeah, that one. Bro, formerly like, right before she transitioned, she killed someone because she was texting. Oh, she was yeah, she was driving. That's oh, right. yeah, Dress it was canceled. manslaughter. Nah. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, I don't know. You could catch a body. Chris Dude, Brown. Every, there's Chris a lot Brown of still exists. Catch bodies. Chris Brown. Bro. You know? All right, let's get off this. I'm not educated <laughs> enough to do this and not get, get in trouble. Huh. Yeah. Cheaters everywhere. Scandals everywhere. Calumny uh, everywhere. One last thing. Did y'all hear about the active serial killer in Stockton, California? Bro, I've been seeing stuff, dog. Yeah, they, he's, you may they've killed like over a dozen, <laughs> a dozen people already. Going after yeah, men, wow. right? Is that correct? Mexican men. Mexican men. Interesting. Yep. That's the profile. It's weird. It's just like uh there's so much fervor for Dahmer right now. Have you heard it's like one of the top watched oh yeah Netflix shows ever? Mm-hmm. It's like I don't know if I fully like like the families of the victims have asked people to stop making stuff on it. Makes sense. That's, like, yeah, sense. but like <laughs> this gets views. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but I got yeah, so many subscribers about today. Canceling murders? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when the number one show in the country is all about murders. Oh, Everyone's yeah. like, yeah, that's cool. Let's watch the f out of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Holy uh, shit. Whoa, anyway, we live like, in a society. There's literally one of those going on right now in Stockton, California. Weird. Hmm. There is one witness who got away. It's the only driver. And what have they said? It's a female. Ooh. What? Now, uh, admittedly, so in a dark alley, you could mistake Miss for Mister. You got a very like masculine look. That's neither here or there. I don't oh, know. Is that they, why they, they got away? Or it's I just part of the equation? Like they got away. I don't know. I don't know. It's a woman. Yeah, I don't know. I don't uh, he did an interview with someone. I didn't watch it yet. All of this is like coming to light right now. It's wild. Hmm. Someone's talking in chat. They were just saying, uh, eh. my, my girlfriend just told me her friend had a sleep paralysis, had, has had sleep paralysis. Any suggestions to help that is what they're looking for. Pray to God, fool. Yeah. That read, one's a solid. Read the Bible. <clears throat> I don't Stop know, dude. Touching yourself. I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> Stop touching yourself. Uh, Nobody uh, here has remember, had sleep paralysis. Don't get scared. Try to calm down. Remember that you will come out of it. Uh, focus on moving. That's what I do. Yeah, when you it can starts get one happening, good movement, you can break it. You can sense it coming, almost like it's it's happening. So just kind of uh, taking charge first before it, uh, it takes charge over you. For me, at least. So. 
smart. So anyway, yes. any other, uh, I think, you know what I want to try eventually that? is uh, the mock, the mock up like a uh, birth patch, whatever <laughs> stimu- electrical stimulators. Like I think us oh, three should try that and they like crank it up to a 10, you know, like Jason stay them. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm talking about? Crank. Yeah. yeah, yeah crank, stay exactly. Alive. Yeah. I feel no. like that, that'd be dope in commemoration uh, actually, of, of you having a kid. Let's make your life more hey, miserable. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was too easy, honestly, having this kid. So I got to yeah. more hardship. Minus the spiders. Yeah. Oh, f- dude. Uh, no, we should have have our listeners like help us come up with a list of punishment for games and stuff we could start doing on stream. Be fun. Punishments? Dude, we should wear fun. those pregnancy things during stream and have it hooked up to stream so it's like a hundred dollars to turn it up a notch you know? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so. fun. we just make a thousand dollars so that they can turn it up to 10 holy shit oh my gosh tell your story tell it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway uh we have several more things on the list but i gotta skip them because yeah anything like super gotta important try to keep this close to an hour okay next time Let's move into stories. Um, everybody, happy October Halloween season. Hope everyone's celebrating it right in whatever way that is. Share with us. Let us know. Scary movie you've watched, TV show you've watched, haunted place you've uh, discovered, your Halloween outfits, you know? So in the next couple of weeks when we meet again and have uh, record another episode, we should maybe attempt to dress up. <laughs> I feel like that's the best we can do as, as 3 a.m. <laughs> maybe, you know. So, uh, and we had ideas. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say them right now. We had ideas? At least Charles was talking to me about an idea that he had. For costumes? Yeah, for us three. Are we doing Charles this couple's remember. costume I'll, I'll right text now? You guys. I'll, I'll, I'll text you guys. So. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. No. Okay, we're going to get into the stories portion. We're trying something new. We mentioned this before, and we're going to try it. Um, it's just one story, but a lot more of a deep dive of a story and research background going into it. And I will be taking the reins on that tonight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else before we continue? We good? Yeah. We good. Okay. I'm going to start with an actual story. So. Uh, and then lead into the, the topic that we'll cover today. So this comes from a German YouTuber named Carrie Inc. Who has since deleted their channel, uh, but was sharing all of their experiences uh, through some online forums, Reddit, and some other weird forums that I found on these stories on. It talks about their experience live streaming on YouTube. And it was October, and they came across... Or in their live stream, somebody who was also on, another YouTuber who was on the stream was talking about scrying. What? The act and the practice of scrying. Scrying. Yep. So he, uh, this YouTuber uh, carrying his listening, never heard of this before. What is it? So they're, they're talking about it on stream. And uh, they're like, yeah, scrying is basically looking. Uh, scrying is... The act of using a medium to see things. Okay. Uh, so in this particular stream, they're saying, yeah, you should try it out. Grab a mirror, dark room, candle. Just look into the mirror for an extended amount of time with the candle lit in a oh. dark room. So carry no eight. Unless I'm seeing myself holding the house cup, I'm out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so carry ink. Does just that right when the stream ends. It's like, I'm super intrigued. What is this about? Closes themselves up in their room, grabs a mirror, candle. It's dimly lit, can barely see a reflection in the mirror. And it's just sitting there. While they're sitting there, they're thinking, you know, am I going to see anything? The Care Inc. refers to a, a previous experience of when uh, they were nine. Their family was on vacation, hiking through the woods, and they came across a dead body, an actual corpse of a woman. So that's playing through their head while they're looking into this mirror in a dimly lit room. What a good headspace. Yeah. <laughs> the door behind Carrie is 
I, earlier I think I said it was closed. It's open. Well, here, watches the door close in the mirror. Carrie Inc. turns around, looks at the door. It is closed and turns back at the mirror. The mirror has changed its form. Where now they're looking at it and the mirror is water. And there's ripples. Bro, Stargate? What the f***? And it's moving. And as Carrie is looking into this, this watery mirror, can hear a voice behind their head. And the voice says the word, Pestis. Carrie Inc. is a geriatric nurse, fresh out of school and into the field. And is thinking really quickly before they even turn around to look who it is. They're like, pestis, I think means pestilence or pest in Latin. Uh, and they re- re- they refer to like uh, them studying about like pest, like pestis bubonic or something about the bubonic plague. So they're thinking of that and they turn around to look again, but there's nothing there. Only this time, the door that was closed, as they're turned around, the door opens up. No one's in the door. No footsteps. Just the door on its own opens up. They turn around again. They're just turning back and forth <laughs> to all these things happening. Turns, a, turns around again to the mirror. The mirror is normal. Except this time, there's somebody in the And it's behind them. And it's... The woman that he saw when he was nine years old and she has rotting flesh. Not thinking what to do or not not really thinking, not doing anything, uh, just kind of frozen, you know, is their response to this whole situation. This woman reaches her hand out and brushes Carrie's face, Carrie's cheek. And in the reflection, in the reflection, <laughs> as the this corpse is brushing her fingers across Carrie's cheek, Carrie's cheek starts deteriorating in the reflection, just like the woman. The- yep. And getting infected by by this this mm-hmm. this pes- pesky hand. Mm-hmm. Carrie finally something clicks. It's like, I have to do something about this. (laughs) (laughs) What Carrie does is grab the candle and blows it out. (laughs) Except when Carrie blows the candle, the flame stays put. Oh, shit. And does not move. What do you do? (laughs) You know? Uh, It it seems like Carrie's kind of stuck in this world. Whether it's happening for real or not, they're stuck in it. When something in the real world pulls Carrie out, it's a vibration in their pocket. It's their girlfriend. Anal beads. He takes oh. it out. Ah. <laughs> yeah, anal beads. <laughs> um, it's like the back, the E5. prison pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rookie move. Um, so he pulls it out. It's the phone. It's his girlfriend. When the the light illuminates the room. The woman in the mirror disappears. The candle light is out and he answers the phone and he hears uh, his girlfriend's voice and uh, everything's back to normal. So that was Carrie's uh, experience with, with scrying. And scrying is a topic that I wanted to cover today. I kind of went over really briefly what is scrying. It's using a specific medium to uh, divine. Yep, to divine, to see things, whether it's visions or signs, guidance, patterns, or even the future and figures, things uh, into other realms even. Looking, Looking into scrying, I wanted to learn about what it is, how to do it, and are there other forces at work when scrying is taking place? Uh, for some reason I was thinking about like, even if you're just doing bloody Mary, you know, in your bathroom, we all grew up hearing 
that's a very like individual thing. And most people have tried Bloody Mary from what I would assume didn't experience anything. But if you think about like for every, what, it, what law is that? Newton's for every action, there's a reaction. Op, uh, for every action, there's an opposite. Equal and opposite. Equal and opposite reaction. So I wonder if there's something watching, something happening outside of our control when we do things like that, especially in the topic of scoring. And we've, we talk about that all the time. Every time we share scary stories or in certain situations where we're talking about like truly terrifying things, it can invite, you know, potentially invite bad spirits. Is that why they use the mirrors specifically for it or what do you mean? Just to like be able to see. Yeah. Like it's, it's a medium. It's like a, I guess, halfway point between you and potentially something else. Uh, basically the road for that something else to travel on. Okay. If you give it gas, you know? Yeah. So are there other like things to use besides a mirror? Yes. And I'll get into that. But first I wanted to get into, uh, where like the origins of scrying. So real quick, Mountain Witch, if you want to elaborate in chat, we'd love to have your input. Yeah. In chat, they said, uh, that's why using a mirror for scrying is the absolute worst. Super terrifying. So we'll get into that more. But uh, uh, first, like the origins of scrying. So the earliest recorded uh, instance of, of scrying comes from 1895 BC in Babylonia. Damn. It's an old, old practice. Been around for a long, long time. And in Babylonia, they used originally a bowl of water. And from there, they added different methods. They started adding oil to the water. Then they started adding flour to the water. And what would happen in these practices is when they were scrying, the oil and the flour would morph into different shapes. And they would read those shapes. And... In cases where they wouldn't use oil or water, they would just watch like the vibrations of the water and the ripples. That was known as hydromancy. So um, that was something interesting that I found in the in the Talmud, which is the like Orthodox Jewish text, Mm -hmm. basically their Bible. It explicitly mentions the practice of Babylonian oil magic. So uh, that's just another resource in which. Uh, scrying uh, and the use of scrying tools is mentioned. There's also a book that talks about this Babylonian oil magic using the bowl of water in a book called Fortune Telling in Mesopotamia by author E. Reiner, if you want to check that out. In ancient Persia, let me pull up this resource here. In ancient Persia, there's a famous book of stories and legends. I think both like fictional and non-fictional. I'm talking about like real life people and like their kind of folklore in Persia as well. The the name of the text is called the Shanamesh. S-H-A-H-N-A-M-E. S-H. That sounds right to me. Um, It has a specific story about this character named Jamshid. So I'm just going to read from this here about Jamshid, who's a legendary Persian hero. So in the beginning, the creator, God, asks a shepherd human named Yima to be in charge of the earth. So Yima's duty is to make sure that everyone has what they need. People can prosper, food on the table, purpose in life, caretaker, almost a little bit of a prophet too. Uh, Yima lives for a few hundred years and in his lifetime uh, gets rid of demons, finds uh, medicine, like the first medicine for men, and basically fulfills the purpose that was given to him by the creator. Uh, Yima's life was filled with really like fantastic stories and a lot of them uh, involved a lot of challenges too. Yima's given special powers 
such as long life, uh, and understands that humans, like mo like all other humans that he works with, don't have these same powers, and that one day they will, like they perish a lot sooner than, than I think he's destined to. And there's one moment in this Persian text where it talks about Yima being told by God that there's going to be a great destruction coming to the earth and he needed to come up with a plan for it. So what he does is he finds an underground cave and finds the best humans, like the most able-bodied humans and two of every animal and still, and brings them into the cave. They seal it off and the world floods extremely similar to Noah. Wouldn't the cave fill with water? I don't know how they sealed it off. Hmm. Probably like flex seal or some shit. That's true. Like, That's a lot of damage. <laughs> My problem. Slap it. Psh. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> slaps it on the cave. Um, so very similar to the biblical Noah and the great flood. So over time and through these experiences, uh, Yima as a hero de- develops into this really really cool guy, prophet, savior almost. And through these experiences, he's given a a new name and he's known as Jamshid, who I mentioned earlier. As he grows, he he finds different tools to help him. And one of the biggest tools he, he acquires is a cup. And it's known as the cup of Jamshid. And it has a lot of parallels to the Holy Grail, but it is not the same thing as Holy Grail. Jamshid's cup uh, was filled with this elixir, and whoever drank the elixir uh, was filled with visions of the future and immortality, much like uh, he had. So this cup was passed down from him to future kings, and this cup remained like a big treasure amongst these Persian kings. Uh, he also used this cup to look into the elixir, whatever whatever was inside the cup, Patron or whatever, and he would use divination. And it was, in essence, a, a scrying mirror. Hmm. So that's another example, origin of scrying uh, is the cup of Jamshid. And uh, through that cup, he was able to see the future. So... Uh, with him, there are specific characters who use scrying and were known for their scrying abilities. Jamshid or Yima is one of them. Another one was John D. So we've talked about John D before. I know you have, Charles. John D is somebody yes. that you're super interested in. Yes. What have you found? So I can't like fully remember everything because the last time I researched it deeply was a while ago. But John D is a very important, formidable figure in the occult magical history. Basically, he was a genius, a mathematician, a geologist, an astrologist. He was into alchemy. He understood, like, early in his life, he went to school. He like, was a part of plays and productions, and he did all these, like, special effects, like, old school special effects that, like, were so advanced people were convinced he had done deals with the devil for instance there was a play that required like a gigantic beetle constructed this beetle that was so anatomically (laughs) correct and it was like the presence of it was so real people lost their minds they freaked the out um that still happens at like universal (laughs) people be scared of like the raptors (laughs) and the dress when jaws comes out of the water (laughs) <laughs> right that's just real boat. yeah <laughs> it's real son <laughs> yeah basically he was old school medieval universal yeah um but he goes on from there continues his research this is a terrible accounting of it but he gets like tied in with like queen elizabeth or something because he's known for his dying or his divination uh he gets the code name 007 that's where that comes from. He's basically like a spy and undercover guy. He's working for the queen. Casting spells and shit. He creates the Nokian alphabet. And that goes on to be used by people in the occult till this day. So very interesting character in history. Shrouded by mystery. 
is a lot of accounts hard to know it's real. Yeah. So magic and, and thank you. Ma- magic aside, <laughs> like he's a pretty renowned scholar, mathematician, yep. uh, astrologer, really good at geology, Maps. real good at geology. <laughs> Uh, he could with math and astrology he could predict stuff really well. Yeah. That's what like catapulted him to be used by royals. Yeah, he was a big ass nerd. Like he would have got a hundred in chess, you know. <laughs> um, with no butt plug. With no butt plug. And that's the magic of it. Add magic. <sighs> magic is just knowledge, guys. This this guy is uh through the roof on his stats. You know, he's maxed out on his stats. <laughs> Uh, with the magic. If he would have hit the gym, he would have had it all. It's over. Yeah. It's Armageddon. Uh, what I read was he was already known by the queen as somebody who was smart in, you know, all these things we just listed, math and whatnot. His wife passed away. The queen was close enough with him that she traveled personally to go visit him while he was mourning he lived in like just outside like london upon visiting him he's talking to the queen and saying hey i've gotten into a few things that would prove at the very least extremely interesting to you my queen and a lot of this has to do with I don't think he calls it magic because at that time, I think the Reformation had just happened with uh, Martin Luther and like the thesis on the church and whatnot. Is that in Germany where it happened? That sounds right. Anyway. um, Sounds very German. Even though the Reformation just happened, it was still a hard time to be a witch, you know, or a wizard. So he doesn't say explicitly like it's magic. He said, through these things, I've seen angels. She's like, how have you seen angels? So he goes back into his house and he comes out with a scrying mirror. And this scrying mirror is a large piece of obsidian, smooth black glass. Oh, yeah. And this thing, he got it from a French explorer who got it from French pirates who raided a Spaniard ship who was coming back from Mexico. Who got it from Kevin Bacon. <laughs> who got it from Kevin Bacon. So that's the seven that's degrees, dude, levels. or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so they were in Mexico, raided this Aztec village or whatever, and got this obsidian, this scrying mirror, from like a temple, like an Aztec temple. And it ended up in the hands of John D. And he's saying Bro. that he's seen... He says angels. I don't know what. Even if it was angels, it's fire, something, fire yeah. vision, you know. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if he was just saying angels to cover it up. Uh, there's a lot of like talk on that, but he's showing this to the queen, and the queen reacted very positively to it, and she said that uh, the mirror was very pleasing to her. Was was the words used uh, for that experience? They spend a little more time talking about it, and she basically invites him to, you know, be an an advisor for her. So through that experience, he bypasses the normal route that every all the other esteemed nobles take, whether it's by blood or through I don't know some voting system or whatever. And just becomes like one of her most trusted advisors. Uh, As this big nerd and somebody who's like in touch with magic, you know. So John D is famous because he helped. He coined the term the British Empire. And was basically whispering into her ear to, you know, go to. Start to over here. Go to there and, you know, start building this empire, this kingdom, and expanding it. So John D. had multiple scrying tools and his, this specific scrying mirror from like the Aztec temple is one of his more famous ones. Do you know anything about, does anybody know anything about Edward Kelly? That's like his assistant. 
Okay. I was going to say he worked with John D, but I don't know anything further, like how he got to be his assistant or any like notable facts. I, I didn't have the time to look into it further, but his name came up a handful of times. Anyway. DJ, real quick. Yep. Can I read a little bit from Wikipedia for scrying to give a little more? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, scrying is like a loose definition of divination process. Like there's a lot of different ways to divine the future, to tell, to look into the future, to get answers. And scrying is like a very broad way of describing a certain way of doing that. Someone brought up tea leaves. Is that technically scrying? It's really hard to say if it is or isn't. I lean that it isn't necessarily. Because what scrying uh, requires is like, Looking into some sort of medium that like gives you pretty dull feedback, like running water, flames, oak, clouds, a mirror, a shiny rock, shiny surface, just something to like give you back. Dude, crystal balls are the most famous scrying tool. There you go. And you kind of stare into it until you start to get impressions or visions. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more like you're staring into like a obscure medium and then you get visions he leaves and stuff that's more like you're doing something and getting symbols and interpreting those symbols does that make sense yeah yeah uh so just real quick scrying is neither a single clearly defined nor formal discipline and there is no uniformity in its procedures which repeatedly and independently have been reinvented and elaborated in many ages and regions furthermore practitioners and author authors coin terminology so arbitrarily and often artificially that no one system uh, can be taken as authorita authoritative or definitive it's like a broad way of describing divination that varies between different cultures all over the world john d has there's an old painting of john d i don't know how old it is because that whole shit went down with him and queen elizabeth happened in like the 1500s um like the late 1500s but there's a painting of john d where there's just like weird stuff, at like the more you look at it, like uh, here. Actually, I'll I'll throw it up on. Uh, sorry, oh right. shit! That's the same picture. Oh, we're looking at the exact same one. Yeah. So you can see he's with uh, that's Queen Elizabeth sitting there, and everybody's just watching in awe. Some might think it's fascinating. Some might be afraid, but he's like, he has like a a vial. That he's like throwing into this bowl. And it looks like fire and light and smoke are coming out of it. Not exactly sure what's going on. But do you see what's above him? An alligator? There's a damn alligator. <laughs> what the f Did you see that before I pointed? <laughs> no. Sean didn't. But there's an alligator flying above his head. And that's not the craziest part. So the people who own this painting straight up pulled a Nick Cage and started like playing with the paint of this <laughs> painting. And as like you need heat. it peeled away or they put lemon juice or some shit, they were finding other elements in the painting that wasn't uh, previously seen. And uh, what they were seeing was like skulls floating around his head. <laughs> so I don't know if like the original painter Talking like painted something. over that or something like that. <laughs> but uh Anyway, it's just uh, uh, John D was a was a prominent figure in that time in history, and the Queen really championed him, and she had like a good long reign. One one other story from John D is she went to him to find since he was like an astrologer as well to find the perfect time of the year, the perfect date for her to. I think this is before his wife died, and they had a whole scrying mirror uh, exchange. She was becoming queen. I don't know exactly how, but she basically asked him to find out the perfect date that would give her like the biggest longevity or like the longest time to reign as queen. Like it would be yep. the most like fortuitous to her. Um, so she really championed him, trusted him. Uh, she reigned for like almost 50 years, I think. And then she passed away when she was old. Uh, unfortunately, John D. After that happened, by that point, not too many people trusted him. The person who trusted him most had passed away, so he kind of like fled London and just lived. I mean, he was always kind of a hermit and just like stayed to himself. But he continued 
to live by himself and he uh was a broke boy until he died i think <laughs> so uh he had like a good run <laughs> <laughs> until he he got he got ran out of town no, you know he didn't <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you couldn't see that shit in your little mirror, boy. Yeah. <laughs> the plan ahead, cuz. And as I was thinking about prominent characters in relation to scrying, could we say, and this is, I don't know, could we say that Joseph Smith? Does it sound familiar? <laughs> Joseph Smith had scrying tools. So, what do you mean, like staring into stones, reflecting staring stones, into hats messages? with rocks and getting messages? I don't know. Just throwing that out sounds, there, dude. Sounds close sounds, enough. Sounds like a. Sounds like a. He was a scribe baby. Wait, so that brings up a question. Uh, wait, go Why ahead. You scrying? I just have a question. So, is scrying? Is there like, is it primarily good results or bad? Like, is there negative energy or positive energy? I don't know if that makes sense, but like, obviously the like the first answers you're getting. Yeah, like the first story was like a very creepy and eerie experience, but. Obviously, like John D, maybe there was like pros to what he was seeing. So, is there like good or bad that comes from scrying, or does it maybe like in your intentions? Yeah, I think it's more of like a, a neutral thing. It can go either way. Like our our Habibi here, Jamshid, you know, uh, from Persia, had his cup, and, and he, he was, was like, good. he was basically a prophet talking right. with God, and he used that cup to give people visions, see into the future. Yeah, so I think it can go either way. Just depends. Yeah, I think it's intentions. How you it. Yeah, intentions. It's a good question though. Like Queen Elizabeth legit hit him up cuz she was like I want to know the best day to do this. Yeah. Got you boo. Yeah. Um uh, DJ, so no, John, as you were talking, I think you're exactly right with the uh, LDS. Yeah. Yeah, with, with Joseph Smith, dude. Uh, I don't have any more on that, but that popped into my mind while I was like thinking of little... characters in history. Go ahead. So if you don't, if you're not aware, the Church of Latter Day Saint Mormons. All of us grew up Mormon. Uh, Large so chunk of our listeners is, are, more, are Mormon. Yeah. So the story is like uh, we have the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith achieved that through seeing stone at the name of Urim and Thummim. He would stare into these. He would receive the scripture and he would have a scribe who would write it down and it's so closely fits the definition of scrying on the wikipedia of scrying it has its own section oh latter-day saint church it's like persian hebrew which is jesus christ latter-day saint <laughs> <laughs> we made it dog no yeah, bro uh there is a story this is folklore i have no substantial things to back this up <laughs> but at one point in the middle formation of the Mormon church, one of Joseph's followers, Joseph, yo, found this stone. I was tilling my land out of the dirt. Beautiful, black, smooth, iPhone-sized stone. And as he looked into the stone, there would be messages written on it. And the farmer really quickly went, wrote them down. And when he wrote them down, the message would be wiped new message would come etch a sketch dog. <laughs> etch a sketch i was thinking of that bro <laughs> devil sketch dog just like <laughs> dude, it sounds like an iphone to me it could be an iphone with the etch a sketch app yeah. dude i was like an iphone that like fell through a time loop but anyway he writes it down the message is clear he's writing and he writes down all this scripture so he goes to joseph and he's like this is dope right isn't this sick? Like, I'm a seer. I'm a prophet, too. Joseph sees it, reads it, and is like, destroy it. Um, this is not a stone of God. Destroy it immediately? stone of the opposition. Yeah, destroy it. Destroy the stone. Destroy the writings. Dude, it was this an iPhone, it, bro. Yeah. This is from the <laughs> devil. Steve Jobs. That's crazy. In uh, the book of Revelations, there's like a scripture that talks about the earth uh, turning into a sea of glass, sea of glass. and we, sh we should be able to look into it and what? Divine, bro. Divine. Uh, so we'll all be scryers, you know, at one hey, point, uh, if we subscribe hey, uh, to, to, to that and Revelations. Um, somebody mentioned in the comments, and I forgot to mention this, so thank you for throwing it there. John D. Scrying Mirror is available 
to see in the British Museum. And Bro, I pull I, that up. Yeah, I, I got a picture <laughs> of it. And this is it right here. Bro, that is a shite mirror. Dog. It's so funny because look how meta this is. It's one per you could see the reflection in the in the <laughs> And in the scrying mirror, the obsidian of somebody taking a picture of it, and it's like one black mirror into another. Whoa, Whoa dude. Black so mirror, meta, dude. bro. Um, <laughs> full circle. Bro, people were bored back then. <laughs> <laughs> they stared into this shiny black thing till they saw things. Bro, that was entertaining. We could say the same nowadays, dog. One more other figure, uh, prominent figure in history that uh, was a known was known to scry was nostradamus so i know Sh i think sean has a little bit of info on that that boy nostradamus yeah bro nostradamus 2022 is the first thing that comes up when i like put in my search here I did you he predict something for this year oh uh, someone was saying that predict nostradamus predict predicted yeah he was the saying he predicted the death of queen elizabeth in 2022 Damn, that's like kind of a wild guess, dude, because she was like getting up there. I mean, that's, obviously that's not, not when he guess. was around, but like, right. He was also an, an astrologer from France. He predicted a ton of things. Uh, allegedly uh, predicted the French Revolution, the Great Fire of London. Oh, yeah. Predicted men uh, walking on the moon. Uh, he predicted the rise of Germany. Inflation and uh, starvation. And he also, tell me if this sounds familiar, but this is one of his predictions. He talks about two royal brothers, fire shall come near that great new city and the heavens burning. A lot of people draw that line to like the the Twin Towers and 9-11. Hiroshima? Oh. Hiroshima. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was thinking at first too. I was like, damn. Yeah. But the the two the two brothers is what people underline most. Ah, uh, uh, and the two the two brothers and the fire coming near the great new city. So, dude, there wasn't even a New York; it was still old York back then. <laughs> um, that is a wild guess, then. But I mean, no, Nostradamus is another figure who had a, a scrying mirror, and people theorize that his predictions came from him his usage of the scrying mirror so uh that's on origins that's on who now we're getting into the how so i found a book and the name of the book is called a luciferian's view deity work and ideas for finding and diversifying your practice so this is written by Dude, I don't know if this person I this person had to have given themselves this name. But this is a, a the, the author of the book is a witch and her name is Murda. And I feel Damn, like Murder on the beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Murder these hoes. Um and this specific book has in chapter 17 using a black mirror and details like the process of what it takes. And I won't go through it all, but basically it starts with one, is to own a medium, basically acquire the mirror. It can be anything that we talked about, a bowl of water. It said like modern day witches use modern day tools. So they'll use, they'll get their iPhone and, and turn it off and just use that as a black mirror. mirror. She talks about how you can potentially use black nail polish uh, on your nails, but the surface is really small. <laughs> You're like trying to see yourself. It's like 240p. It's like, I'm trying to get that 4K scry, you know? <laughs> we got Charles's camera versus our cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> dude. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So the first one is to own a medium. The second one is to set the scene. So it's important that there aren't any distractions in the room, that your focus is just on the mirror. Not only removing distractions, which is why you you basically do it in a dark room. You have a single candle. Uh, she talks about like the placement of the candle. Talks about like it's good to maybe put it behind the mirror so you have ambient light so you can barely see like the outline of your face and the features on your face, things like that. But she talks about like 
Some people have skulls with them when they scry because skulls represent communication. And they talk about how important it is for the skull to still have a, uh, you have to have the jaw bone with the skull. It's not a good thing if you have a skull without the jaw bone, which I found interesting, but it didn't go into it further, I don't think. I think it was an amethyst they talked about having as well that helps with, I can't remember, some type of crystal to have with you because that helps also with, with communication and whatnot. Anyway, so number two is setting the scene um, and eliminating distractions and having objects that can help increase the energy uh, that adds to a successful scrying. So uh, number three is the final one. She talks about finishing correctly, almost like how you say goodbye on a Ouija board. Oh, yeah. She says it's important to, to cleanse the area and your room. So the way you can do that, you can sage was the first one she talked about. She also talks about washing the mirror. Uh, she talks about how she's like dipped the mirror into like a lake near her house, almost baptizing it and giving it like a new life and purpose. And now she's going to use a mirror regularly. <laughs> so, yeah. So one, find the medium to set the scene. Three, finish properly and cleanse. There is an article that I found on the name of the site is called Scientific American, but I don't know why that sounds like incredible to me. Like it, it has no credibility type of incredible. Um, but the title is Illusory. Illusory scenes fade into and out of view. And it's basically the author is a scientist and uh, is going over like the practice of scrying and tying it basically to what they call neural adaptation. So our neurons is basically receiving information all the time, you know, and they compare it to like putting your hand on the desk, your hand starts to feel what kind of material it is, the texture of the desk, the temperature right now, the desk I'm touching is cold. You know? And if I leave my hand there for a half hour, the desk kind of fades out of like my thinking because nothing's changed. It's the same thing that it was a half an hour ago. So neural adaptation is basically like our brain, when you're looking into the mirror and you're scrying and there's not a lot of information, you know, because you have the dimly lit room and whatnot, your mind starts to kind of forget what it actually is and then kind of opens up to what it possibly could be, basically leaving it to your imagination, almost making things up. Hmm. Um, Another example they use of that is semantic satiation, which is basically when you say, we've all had this before, but semantic satiation is when you say a word enough where it starts to lose its meaning and it just becomes a sound, hmm. you know? Like we've all had that before where words just become sounds. You say a word over and over again. So that's kind of like a scientist, I guess. I think it's a scientist's take on like scrying and why that happens. Um, Makes sense to me. Basically, they're saying it's just a, almost, I guess, a trick of the mind. Imagination. Imagination, yeah. But like if it yields results. But if it, I mean. how you described it. But what Are about, the results imagination or are they, or are they real? Or are they based what if reality? you can actually impact things by the power of your mind? That's what I'm saying. So once you Even create it in your subconscious. mind. And then put that out into the universe. But there's there's more than one reality, right? Or is it like there's relative reality? Like this is this is this is your truth. You live your truth. But is it the truth? You know. True. That's Red pill, blue pill. I don't pill. know if it has real results though. That like affects everyone's reality. It doesn't matter how you describe it. It's still a real thing. Like no. placebo effect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Placebo. It's like astrology. <laughs> okay. Never mind. <laughs> Moving on. That's such a that's such a, a Taurus thing to say. Um, yeah. Uh, so those are a lot of the resources that I pulled from. I forgot. This is uh, more anecdotal, but the witch that wrote the uh, Luciferian's view with the usage of the black mirror in chapter seventeen, she wrote another book, uh, short. That's just over seventy pages. 
but it's called the complete guide on how to sell your soul. And that's something I'm going to look, I'm going to, I'm going to look into a little bit, but just looking at the table of contents and the chapters after the intro, you have like the history of deal uh, with the devil is longer than you think. And it goes to soul, the devil consequences, hell and afterlife, cutting ties with an Abrahamic religion, mental illness, formulating your wish, uh, finding a buyer, yeah. closing occult rituals, bartering, signing your contract, building an altar, weird and weird stuff, dude. So, yeah, I just have all that okay, pulled up on like my computer. Sounds like you're getting into some dark <laughs> <laughs> Yo, see, here's the thing. It's October. This is classic crystal balls, uh, dude, magic, things like that. That I wanted to hit a, a classic topic. So, but yeah, that's all I have on scrying for right now. Super fascinating. I was most fascinated when uh, reading about like the history and the origins of it in Babylon, in Persia, especially reading up more on John D. And then finding this witch who who's uh, self-proclaimed like Luciferian and writing her book on using a black mirror. She even talks about like, okay, I read a little bit about the selling your soul bit. She says everyone sells their soul. Christians sell their soul. They sell their soul to God. And it's basically making a contract with what uh, with some deity that determines what happens in the afterlife. So for a Christian, that's choosing to follow God. And in return, you get to go to heaven. Making a contract with Lucifer uh, warns other, I guess, privileges in how they would put it. But so in a sense, the act itself, selling your soul, is she was defining it. It's not, it's a neutral thing. It's what you sell your soul to. I mean, I guess she probably thinks she's not necessarily in the right, but she, I assume, is happy with her decision. Someone who sold their soul to Lucifer. But <laughs> um, that's, that's, that's today's story, this episode's story. Scrying, <laughs> Next time someone rolls mirrors. a one. Why not? Next time someone rolls a one. You gotta sell, baby. <laughs> that's all your soul. Damn, bro, that's high stakes. Yeah. You did. That was awesome. That was a fun deep dive. Thanks, guys. How long was that? An hour and thirty-eight minutes. We've been streaming. So maybe forty-five minutes. Yeah, I think that's kind of what we're we're aiming for. And then yep. also a bonus. But tonight, do you want to go over what you had on the list? On what? The conspiracies. Now we'll do that next. We'll do it next time. I gotta get going. Okay. Yeah. No, you're good. I gotta go feed baby. You're good. Get ready for my night shift. You're fine. Thank you for joining us. I, I know it, it. You have a lot on your plate, so. Yeah, um, it's just a baby, dude. <laughs> anything uh, else from 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 our end? No. I saw more people pop into the chat. Thank you for 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 coming through. Somebody said, "Read the book Early Mormonism and the Magic World View." Have you heard of that? That was Pack Attack. I feel like I've That's seen a that Pearl name. Great price. So, <laughs> uh, and what tier patron do we have to hit to to own our soul? Uh, Millie or Billy, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. going. We we're not going cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's not to say we're not going. <laughs> EJ, thank you so much. That was rad. <laughs> That's that, everyone. Thank you so much for for joining in. Uh, we'll try to record next week. We're kind of just shooting from the hip, playing things by ear. <laughs> so thanks for your patience. In the meantime, let us know what you think about the, and this is our first time trying like the one story thing. I'm sure we'll get bad, better at it if uh, we continue trying this way. But anyway, let us know what you think about that. Thanks for, for listening. Tell a friend, uh, enjoy your spooky season and uh, trust your gut and watch your back. Bye, love you, be safe. Be careful out there. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of 3 a.m. If you want to support us, visit our Patreon where patrons have access to exclusive content. If you're not able to support us monetarily, don't worry. This episode is on us. You can still rate and review us on whatever platform you listen to us on. It really does go a long way. You can also follow us on social media. Our handle everywhere, including Patreon, is 
the 3 a.m. pod. Finally, do you have any scary stories? If so, submit them to our website, the3ampodcast.com. We love any audio or visual aids that can help bring your stories to life. So file uploads are welcome with your written submissions. We're anxious and excited to hear from you.